Hey, hey, Summoners, Flares here, and today we're going to be covering another Mobilitics 5 Tips and Tricks video, and so this time we're going to be covering the Spider Queen Elise. As always, ladies and gents, Mobilitics.gg is the place to go to improve your game. We provide champion pages, pro builds, counter guides, combos, and an item importation tool so you'll never have to alt tab again to see what the optimal build is. If you want to find out more, we have a nifty link for you to click down below in the description. Leading off with tip number one, we got passive tricks. And with Elise's passive, which are her spiderlings, her spiderlings are the unsung hero. They enable her to have a fast and healthy clear in the jungle by taking aggro from the camp and soaking damage instead of you. Now, this isn't something that is new for the veterans, but for the sake of newer players trying to pick up Elise, in this clip, this demonstrates the best way to shift aggro is by taking a step back and waiting for the camp to shift its focus. Elise's spiderlings are clutch in some instances too, because they generally tail behind her and essentially soak most skill shots. Ezreal Qs, Jinx Ws, Lee Sen Q, Nidalee Spear, you get the gist. Be sure to pop your spider form when you're making your great escape because you can just squeak by with a sliver of HP with your spiderling soaking skill shots that can save your life. Spiderlings can also take the aggro of Drakes and Rift Heralds too. Since these are pretty much the most powerful neutral objectives in the game, they do a lot of damage as well. Rift Herald and Dragons will always aggro the nearest enemy. Elisa's spider form attack range is 125 units, and her spiderlings range is 100. So, as long as you are at the maximum range for your auto attacks, Dragons or Rift Herald will aggro your spiderlings. This also means that Elise can now plow through Ocean and Cloud Drakes because they don't have splash damage, while with Rift Herald, Fire, and Mountain Dragons, there is this extra step you need to take in order to be efficient. In this clip, you can see that the step I'm talking about for Fire and Mountain Dragon is bouncing aggro, meaning that you need to take a shot and then let your spiderlings tank and then repeat the process. For Shelly, you'll want to start the fight in human form, then switch to spider form and Q after it charges. Your spiderlings will jump into attack range, and then you'll want to kite away to your maximum attack range to ensure you aren't tanking. From there, it should be really easy to proc the eye of the herald, just be sure to dodge its sweeping attack. Moving on over to tip number 2, we'll take a look at Elise's Q ability, Neurotoxin and Venomous Bite. Elise's Venomous Bite has a bit of a dash. The leap range is slightly larger than the range of Flash. The only issue is that with using it as a gap closer is that it'll put it on cooldown and you'll lose out on a ton of damage. However, your Q won't go on cooldown if the target dies during the cast animation. Your Q will still be available and you'll be much closer to your target. And all it costs is a single smite charge. So in these very specific circumstances, you can Q a minion, then smite it before the animation completes to get the benefits of the gap close without messing up your damage combo. Also, Human Form's damage scales with its target's current health, while her Spider Form Q scales with the target's missing health. This means to maximize your damage, you will need to lead with a Human Q while the target is higher health, and then use your Spider Q later in the combo when they are missing more health. Utilizing these small efficiencies can add up and improve your clear speed, and in close skirmishes, it can also give you the most efficient damage output you need to finish off kills. Also, using your Venomous Bite plus Smite increases the amount of damage you can do at once, making it extremely easy to smite, steal, or secure powerful neutral objectives like the Dragons or Barons. Alrighty, next up for tip number 3, we'll cover over Elise's W, Volatile Spiderling and Skittering Frenzy. Elise's Human Form W is an amazing tool, not only to burst out or poke your enemies, but it is an incredible ability for gathering information. Human Form W extends in a direction and is a heat seeker for enemies within a certain range. So not only does it sniff out enemies, it grants vision too, meaning you can launch your spiderling towards brushes to face check for you and make sure the area is clear. This is especially helpful for pushing forward to invade the enemy jungle when your sweeper is on cooldown or just trying to place down vision. Your Human Form Spiderling also has this interaction with your Spider Form Q. What I mean is that if you launch your Spiderling in a direction, then use Spider Form Q, the Spiderling will launch from wherever it is at currently and explode at your target whoever you bit down on. This is useful for when there are minions or champions in the way of the target you're trying to assassinate and want to stay on top of maximizing your damage output. Lastly, your Spider Form W, Skittering Frenzy, is an attack speed steroid for yourself and your Spiderlings, though it is an auto attack reset. So when you go all in, don't trigger your W right away. Auto first, then W to maximize your damage. Next up for tip number 4 is Elisa's signature abilities, Cocoon and Repel. Leading off with Elisa's Human Form E, Cocoon, there aren't really many tricks, but there are some pretty handy flash combos that you should learn. First, you have the basic Flash plus Cocoon combo. It extends the range of your crowd control and is essentially the number one method you'll be using while playing Elise. You can see this in action here with Elise ganking from Tribrush and then using Flash plus Cocoon combo to catch out the Kale and get the kill. 
And secondly, you have this E flash combo where it allows you to follow through with more damage faster on the target while also hiding the animation a little bit. You can see it here with the Kha'Zix is looking to get a quick kill on one of the three low targets, but the Elise uses the E flash to catch the Kha'Zix off guard and quickly squash the bug. And for the last combo, you have the E flash retreat, which allows you to quickly reposition to change targets or escape from danger. Which you can see in this clip, Elise tries to take Scuttle from Evelyn, but the Lucian middle collapses on her and narrowly kills her. Moving on to the spider form E, Repel, this is the main appeal to Elise as it is extremely powerful for gap closing, being a master escape artist, and turret diving. As most players know, Elise can use her Repel to drop turret aggro, which is why Elise must use her full burst combo under tower and pick up aggro first. As she takes a shot or two, she can Repel, drop aggro, and let the next person tank the tower. This is insanely beneficial to learn because this is the best method to carry and climb with Elise. Some lesser known tricks with Elise's repel is that she can jump to plants in the jungle or enemy wards. This is not only because the wards and plants are coded as enemy minions, but your repel gives vision around its entire circumference. Like how you can see it here, where Elise is aiming to pick the Vayne who is split pushing. Elise wastes both Cocoon and Spiderling but fights the Vayne anyways. The Vayne is trying to kite out a vision with her ultimate, but Elise uses her repel to patiently wait for the invis of Vayne's ult to disappear and land on top of her. This is even though there is no ward placed in this tri brush to give Elise any information of where Vayne is, and by doing this, Elise claims a kill for her team. This means you can point and click to these objects while using your repel and use the plants or wards as an extra escape tool. For instance, in this clip, Elise is spotted on a ward and Evelyn seemingly is about to kill her. Elise quickly reacts and bursts down the Evelyn while dodging abilities from the Xerath with the Repel, and clicking over to the Blast Cone and popping it to avoid dying to the Lucian. Also, you can utilize Dragons, Rift Heralds, and Baron, and even plants to avoid certain vision spots, and rotate for ganks or counter ganks much quicker. Last up, since Elise's ultimate is just a transformation mechanic to swap out her QW and E spells, there isn't really any depth or tricks with it, and that's why for our fifth and final tip, we have some pointers on how to approach ganks and invades. Though it is worth noting that you must travel at all times in spider form. Spider form increases your move speed by 25. That is actually a massive amount of speed boost. At level one, your move speed is 330. In spider form, it's 355. That is insane difference. That is one of the highest base move speeds in the game so long as you are in spider form. This increase allows you to zoom around the map much much quicker and get into places for ganks, invades, counter ganks, and even just clearing much faster than most of your opponents. So in order to approach ganks, understand that Elise is heavily reliant on landing her crowd control first in order to dish out the most amount of damage possible. Too many newer players try to throw it at max distance and make a gamble ego play and guess their dodge pattern. I'm not saying it's necessarily the wrong play, but closing the distance is the best possible method. As you can see in this clip, it's better to run at the enemy in spider form and wait for the opponent to use abilities. If they use dash, you can follow it up with a repel or a Q or quickly cancel your spider form and shoot out your webs to lock them down or force a flash. Shen realizes he's overextended and tries to force the 1v1 with Scion, but he lacks the damage and dies for free. Lastly, the best way to approach invading as Elise is getting proper early vision down. This means utilizing the vision from your human form spiderling to push up and get a ward on the enemy's buff. In this clip, Elise's pushes forward for vision and resets to clear Red, Raptors, and Gromp for level 3. The Elise skitters to Sejuani's red buff, fully knowing Sejuani would be there. Elise fights, gets the kill on Sedge, and manages to evade getting killed by the Quinn in the process. This was a huge win for Elise because now Sejuani has no buffs to clear and severely weakens Sedge's early game ganking and clearing power, while Elise gets a much needed gold spike to snowball the early game. And that's all ladies and gents, I sure hope you enjoyed this Mobilitics 5 tips and tricks video for Elise, I put a whole lot of love into this one, and if you liked the video be sure to give a thumbs up or let us know down below in the comments. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and good luck out on the Rift Summoners.